You can do this. You can. You keep coming here every day and I'll train you. In this video, I'm going to quickly run around, show you all the places you can get the target farmable and faction gear for this one shot occultist. Level 65, however, I haven't put any points into any skills since level 52, I think. I'm still wondering whether to go with it's down to Nightblade or Oathkeeper. I mean, you could do Necromancer, but those two are kind of... I don't really think they're going to buff the, the single skill as much as Nightblade. I'll get into all that in, in another video. Don't worry about it for now. For now, let's go get some gear. We'll go and get that first, and in that location, you can also get that. <clears throat> Although that chest armor drops in quite a few places, the, the area where Sister Crimson is... Up from the infernal waste rift there are creatures in there that will drop it she will drop it if you want to repeat farm over and over and over i suggest and it's up to you you can go to other places i mean you can go to the temple of the eldritch sun get that chest armor to drop but you know that's the only thing that you're going to get from in there come to the infernal waste rift and just go straight up straight up north Try not to get into too many fights, unless you have to. Unless you have to, just get rid of them. Right, so the place you'll come into is this Tomb of Satham. Yeah, I think that's one there, that Chosen Raiment. That was off one of those little guys, wasn't it? Okay. So they drop it as well. It's a thing that has acid damage on it and it converts vitality to acid. The main thing on that is it's got plus three to Dreeg's evil eye because what, what you want to do is get it up to 22. And you can get it to 22 quickly by picking stuff like that up. So there's that. So Sister Crimson, she's always, well, whenever I, she's down in this bit down here. I haven't seen a spawn anywhere else. She's there she is. So she's, She's in that bit. I I've, I've think I've seen her in that bit down there, but you won't have to spend long in here to find her. And um, as with all the bosses, you can one-shot her once you've got all this kit on. There she goes, look. She hadn't dropped her um, MI weapon. But I've got some footage of her dropping that. I'll just splice that in now. She's in exactly the same place as she was on the run I just did. Same thing, shoot her, wait for her to die, clear up whoever's hanging around. The thing she drops this time round, it's got some really good affixes on it. That magic corrosive's good, but it's got a rare of the venom claw. So that's just immediately a massive upgrade. And I would say, while, while it's not really worth repeat farming in normal over and over to get decent affixes drop on this, once you get into elite and more importantly probably ultimate just keep doing her over and over and over again until you get a really good roll of affixes on there both of them related to poison or acid damage perfect okay so that's that and that thing what's interesting is although you can go and farm leaf main horns from the leaf main dudes in Oakdenbog at the same time as farming basilisks for that fang killing plants to get the vine rings vine rings are decent you can go to the shop vinyl ton or vinyl ton some plant shopkeeper over in the ancient grove he's just over there entrance to the ancient groves there so if you come out of the coven into the bog and just go straight over as far over to the east as you can go at the bottom go into the ancient grove you need a skeleton key and you can go in to the bit beyond the skeleton key, find Vinalton, who's the shopkeeper in there. And then what you can do is you can go into the next area on, which is through a little portal door, count to 10, go back through the portal door, go back to Vinalton. His inventory at his shop will have refreshed. So you can either go and target farm all this stuff, that thing that thing, those rings, or you can go and force him to refresh his stock and buy stuff. Or you can just go in there once 
and just buy one version of that. It's got a decent suffix, but the prefix is a bit garbage on that for me. Those rings, it's really just a case of getting them with some decent resistances on because they, by default, they've got a bit of acid and poison buff on them. That thing, you're really only interested in the buff to Dreeg's Evil Eye. It will automatically come with some poison damage on it. If you're set on farming these because you want to get XP while you're doing it, these leaf main horns and this, if you go out of Ugden Bog Coven Refuge into the swamp bit here, there's always, always, absolutely, yeah, don't forget, turn your toggle skills on. There's always a whole bunch of basilisks just here. As I was saying, the drop rate on these things isn't great. But it doesn't take long to get to this bit. And you head up round here, apart from, oh yeah, and of course there's plants as well. So you can do your vine ring farming, if you feel like it, while you're up here. Sometimes there's more of those basilisks in that bit. There's some down here, look. There's a living ring, that's the... It's good for Arcanists, plus three to Iskandras. So that's that's your, that's your loop for your basilisks. And there's this bit down here, if you come down to this bit, this is where you start seeing those leaf main enemies, if you're lucky. You usually get a good couple of groups of them. Not today, but further west. Right, get away from the insect. Yeah, there'll be some in here. There's one there, look. Well, there's a couple of big ones, okay. Of course, if you, if you don't get the items drop, it's not because you're killing the wrong things. It's because the random loot luck isn't with you. So yeah, basilisks around there, leaf mains around this bit. The other place you can go is if you go up to Barrowholm, run through the village, and then over just on the east. It's the area where you have to do the Barrowholm quests, where you have to restore the um, their shrine thing is and rescue those people. There's a bit of a circular area there, and there's a Barrowholm mine for a secondary quest. The mine is usually rammed full of basilisks and the area outside the mine just slightly to the west is a patch of ground with a whole load of leaf main guys so if you feel like running up to Barrowholm and running around there that's another place you can do it but I think my suggestion would be repeat the area by the refuge because you just quit out go back in turn your toggle skills on leg it back out of the gate this is what I tended to do but I mean Vinylton shop is guaranteed so if you've got a skeleton key and you just got to you know nip across the ancient grove you can buy all this stuff but it is expensive some of them are hundreds of thousands or you can just spend a bit of time doing this Hey, nice. There you go. Look, I got a fang drop. Makes a change for me to actually demonstrate something in a video and have it happen. Thing is, that, although that's got oh, there's two. Okay, right. Check that out. There's one up there. Mighty basilisk fang. Mighty's got. I think it's that plus nine percent physique on it. Don't know what else. Aggressive of ruin. Ruins put the physical damage on there. Aggressive has given me. Plus six percent offensive ability. One I got is better, I think. Just about. I mean, that's got slightly more poison damage. And I mean, like I said, at this point, you don't really want to get into micromanaging the odd one percent of damage. Worry about that in Elite and Ultimate. <laughs> don't worry about it so much in Normal, because you're going to be smacking everything so hard. I mean, I'll pick these things up. What the hell? Right. So that's good. So that's a good demonstration. So they were there. 
the reason why I'm checking the map is just to see you obviously don't want to go back to the green areas where you've been because it's all circles and around the houses. Oh look, there's millions of them here. Watch this lot go now. Go on. Yeah, and the other thing to do, that, that route along the bottom towards the ancient grove, you're always going to get a couple of groups of basilisks and or leaf main thingies along here as well so it's worth doing the run the other thing is you could always go into the ancient grove to hunt basilisks and leaf mains but there's another basilisk fang of corrosion okay thank you that's probably better than the one i've got right this is what i was talking about it's got a corrosion has added Acid damage on, or I may have added acid and poison. I have to double check that, but that's definitely better than what I've got. I've got 37% poison, 38%. No, I just got 37% poison. Okay, so the corrosion has added the acid damage onto that thing. Player level 70. I've got to make sure I don't lose this now when I pick it up because it's a single slot item. There it is. Right, this is good actually. It's a good demonstration. I'm getting some good loot luck here. That's the end of the run. There's Moltrigan. He wants me to go and kill Gargobolt. I've already one-shotted him, mate. We'll talk about it later. Actually, I wonder if you'll... You I've already done this. Yeah, nice one. What have I got? Hmm. I have some questions. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to talk to him. Right, let's go. Okay, so that was reasonably useful i'll tell you what i don't want to sell that thing by mistake that extra acid damage on that and 100 percent poison damage that's brill right so i think i've effectively covered where to get those things from rona praxis sting okay let's do rona praxis sting again this is dead easy you'll get this this is probably the first bit you'll get because when you come out of devil's crossing into act two and get up to the old arcovia rift this is quade's camp and you know you probably have been in this hive by now on whatever character so so i'm there old arcovia rift i'm going to come down here past that shrine to the wasp nest entrance and that's where this queen rona praxa bad guy is Right, so you go in here. Get out of my way, bees. Right, you go in here. Get your map up. Rona Praxa is always just there. Always. She ain't got multiple spawn points. She's here. Sometimes that's blocked. So, you, know. you just take the shortest route. I mean, you can farm for royal jelly while you're in here if you want. Kill some bees, wasps, whatever. Right, so when you get to this, you get to here, you know she's up there. Early on she's quite nasty, but now it's so like, hello, you're dead. She didn't drop it, but I'm not going to bother repeat farming her until it drops. It is quite a frequent drop. You don't have to wait long for that. And it's, it's deceptive. That's a really good one. That 28% weapon damage to Dreek's Evil Eye. Because it's adding weapon damage in. It means that without specifically having attack damage converted to health on Dreek's Evil Eye. If you have devotions or anything that's got attack damage converted to health on it. 6% of attack damage converted to health. That's pulling in 28% weapon damage. So alright, it's a small amount of attack damage converted to health. But it's way better than no attack damage converted to health. Later on, you'll get stuff that all one of them does. I can't remember which one. There you go. That actually puts 5% of attack damage converted to health on Dreeg's Evil Eye. But because Dreeg's Evil Eye is pulling in weapon damage, any generic attack damage converted to health will actually be factored in. So that's a good one to get. So there's the Stirring Hive. 
there's the rift you get to it from. So we've done that, that, this, this, that. Those rings, yeah, farm the plants in Oakton Bog or go and buy them from Vinyl Turn. That Saleo sect leg guards, really it's just for the attack damage converted to health and they will drop with some good resistance rolls if you're lucky. Where does that come from? Broken Hills. This isn't the Dreeg's Evil Eye thing, but I'm going to do this anyway because it's quite important. If you, you need the Hidden Path quest active, which means you have to go and kill the Dreeg boss, ironically, just outside Devil's Crossing, and then you come here. Broken Hills Rift, follow the path I'm running along. I'll get the map up once I get where I'm going. Yeah, so you start the Hidden Path quest and then when you get I'll have to do a video about the Hidden Path Quest. There are other videos there, Hidden Path Quest. Go and have a look. Go and have a look at some other channels' videos <laughs> for the Hidden Path Quest. I'll, I'll do one one day. So, you, yeah, you rift there. You come all the way around here and you get to here. So if you've got the Hidden Path Quest active, if you kill the Dream Boss and got the Rune Stone in your inventory, this will open. If you've completed the Hidden Path Quest, the Rune Stones will no longer be in your inventory, but it doesn't matter. That thing will still open. it's a tiny area and it's hidden so there's not a lot of point you getting the map up you're coming through the gate and you go up you go up this bit here and the Saleo boss will spawn curse of frailty one shot and he's dead and he's dropped um hooray right so after with all these things anything that drops a monster infrequent the monster infrequent item will drop before you break the glowing boss ball if you break the glowing boss ball you get a bunch of other stuff worry too much about that so there you go it's got a range the highest attack damage converted to health you'll get on there is six percent if you get one drop with six percent keep it those resistances may be a stack better than what i've got it's got a little bit more ether resistance it's got chaos resistance and it's got eight percent elemental on this build i will be struggling for elemental resistance so they might be better all those buffs to damage Ignore that. So I'm not going to get any benefit from that at all. But you know, that's how you get those things. So although that's not a Dreeg's Evil Eye thing, it's like the attack damage convert to house useful. So we've done that, we've done that, we've done that. Rings, Ronopraxis, we've done that, we've done that. The other stuff is all faction gear. So that Dreeg Venom Shroud hood, you buy from the... Yeah, and obviously when you come in here, I know I didn't say to normally join Bismel, I join Dreeg because Dreeg... You won't be surprised to know Dreek is the one that's got all the, all the groovy stuff. Where's that hat? There it is. Dreek's Venom Shroud Hood. Again, you can you can play the game of forcing the vendor to refresh your stash to see if you get better stats. If you want to max out the acid and poison damage, I mean, obviously, that's got 50% and 55%. Actually, how much is it? It's cheap. Let's buy that. Okay, so say I didn't have one, and I just bought that. So when I hover over that, it's got the same rated poison damage and acid damage. If you come up here and go through, so used to be in Abysmail, there's a door here. Go through the door. I think it's count to 10, maybe. I can't remember. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Hopefully that's not too quick doesn't matter because it's right there so as soon as you come out the door click back on them and have a look it's different see acid and poison damage and all it's different so if you wanted more pierce resistance you can get it to roll with more pierce resistance by doing that if you want more acid and poison damage you can get to roll i'll do it again and what we are 64 and 63 and 44 so we go back in here one two three four i've not opened that yet okay five six seven eight nine ten whatever was it 64 and 43 or something? 61 and 53, 18% pierce resistance. And all the other stuff will do the same thing. So, you know, whatever you want, you can do that. Why am I not wearing the Dreeg Venom Shroud pauldrons? Because they do not give me the plus two to Dreeg's Evil Eye that the Rowari Mantle gives. 
the Rowari mantle, go back to the same riff we went to to get Rona Praxis what's it. Come in here, talk to this shopkeeper. It's in his respected. Yeah, he's got an upgrade. So there's the upgrade one, level 70. And in. Res is that friendly? Yeah, in respected. Oh, God, there it is. Rowari Mantle. Yeah, you could sort of do the same thing here, but you have to go away and visit two shopkeepers or go and find a portal door to go through. It's not worth a flipping hassle, if you ask me. Is that one better than the one I've got on? 62 and 65. Yeah, I didn't even play that game. I didn't even play that game to get that. That was what I got when I bought it. I didn't even look at that, but that's much better, isn't it? And you can just sell that. Soulbound means you can only wear it on the character that's um, that's obtained it. You get shot of that. I don't need that. The one I had was better. Ish. Pierce Resistance one was good, but I'm not bothered about that at the moment. Okay. So we've done that. We've done that. We've done that. We've done that. That was just a random drop. You can craft boots or you can go and buy some from Homestead. That was a random drop. I just bought that from this guy here. Buy that from... Oh yeah, where to get the hat from? Uh, Homestead. So the previous hat... And you're going to be able to get this before you... I think you're going to probably be able to get this before you can get that. Or before you can wear that Bismay or one. Was that a level 65 item? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah, that's a level 65 item. So what you want to do, you want to come to Homestead, talk to this guy, and get this Homestead hat, Harvest Helm, Acid Damage, Poison Damage, Health Regen. It's actually got a lot of good stuff on it. Rejuvenation, it's got a heal thing on it if you're struggling with healing. And that is level 35. And again, you need to be respected with them. If you're using a mandate, you'll be respected real quick because they, they've got the same... The great thing about Homestead and Coven is killing beasts. So Coven is killing beasts and Homestead is killing beasts. So as soon as you start earning rep with them and you're running around killing animals, particularly if you're farming those basilisks and leaf mains, I'm pretty sure both groups, factions, will get rep from killing those beasts. So that's always a good thing. So that farming's multiply useful. Rowari caught... Oh okay <laughs> sorry i should have <laughs> i should have done this when i was here that roari cord now why that's good plus one to all skills in occultists and it's got acid and poison damage by default on it i believe it's in respected if you can't find it put in poison damage there it is Roari Cord, yeah, it comes in Acid and Poison, plus one to all skills and occultist. So that one is the cord I could be wearing the Waste Guard, because I'm level 50. And when you get up to level 70, you can wear the Roari Girdle. The physique requirement on that should not be an issue at all. So that's that. That thing, uh, it's a random blueprint drop, I believe. You either have it or you don't. And that's pretty much covered everything. So those two things, whatever drops, don't worry about it. Or you can buy them. But you're going to get gloves and boots drop. And you will get gloves and boots drop with some kind of poison damage on. Just don't get anything that converts damage out to some other type. Specifically, don't get anything that converts acid damage to some other damage. Because you don't want to be doing that. I think that's it. That's all the gear. God, that dragged on. Okay. Next video I do, I'll do an update on this. I'll, I'll have made my choice and picked a second mastery. I have a feeling it's going to be Nightblade. The reason for that, I'm not going to do it now, is because you've got that merciless repertoire that buffs poison damage and it adds poison damage to the attack. The attack damage, some of it is going into Dreek's Evil Eye. There's that. And there's this thing here that lowers poison and acid resistance. I think, I think that's what I'm going to do. Right, thank you very much for watching. I hope that was useful. Get out there, one-shot those bosses, and if you're doing it and you're having fun with it, <laughs> stick a comment in this video's comment thing saying, I one-shot whoever. Let me know. I've 
done pretty much most of the ones in normal. I'm not sure I feared in Marcel's going to go, and Loghorian was not a one shot. Loghorian was a three shot. Might have been an impatience issue. I might have got him in two, <laughs> but I got bored waiting for it for the poison to tick on him. And yeah, Loghorian was a three shotter, and that was at level I can't remember. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that one, and I'll catch you in the next one.